Yo, this is Grindface and the Therapist, man. I'm Demetrius. And this is Samia. We've been together for 28 years, married for 23, 22, but who's counting? This is episode 11, man. We're talking about compromising. And a lot of times people feel like you're a sucker if you compromise. You know what I'm saying? You're not holding your ground. You're a punk. But it's a beautiful thing when both parties compromise. Samia, start us off with compromising. I think... Just what you said, you know, sometimes people think you're a punk. I think that's two different conversations. It, there's a difference between being passive and compromising. I think if you're p- being passive, you're doing things at the expense of yourself, you know. But when you're compromising, I think that's done from a healthy standpoint. Or you're not being, yeah, it's like you're not being selfish. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You're taking in consideration of the other person, your spouse, of what they enjoy doing like okay you might not enjoy doing that but if they enjoy it you know what I'm saying it's compromise and, and go out with them you never know you might be open to new things that you didn't know you like because you're going somewhere that you wouldn't go which would result in something beautiful you know mm-hmm. in some places you probably be pissed but hey it's part of compromising but what about if it's like one-sided if the, your spouse ain't never want to do anything you want to do, it's always about them, them, do what I want to do. You think that will like, build a relationship or tear down? You don't even have to ask me that question. You could have just elaborated on why you think it'll tear a relationship up instead of asking me. Well, you know, but people don't know. You always, like, it's people listening that don't know how this will tear your relationship down. <laughs> Last podcast, when I was asking you questions, you said I was interrogating you. Okay, so, I, so you can answer the question the, the, yourself. The, the result, this is how it could tear your relationship down. Thank you. If 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 one person is, is always doing what the other person is doing, they not enjoying life. It's, it's all about them and the activities they want to do, the events they want to go to, and it's just it becomes one-sided so the other person will become bitter, I believe. Yeah, I, I I mean, touche. I don't have anything to add on to that because I agree. But I could think I think you could compromise in things outside of a relation. Well, out of a marriage too, or a relationship. It could be a friendship. Well, I guess that's still a relationship. It could be at work. You know, it could be sometimes compromising can be taking the the high road too. Like what do you mean? Like in, at a work. Um, argument or something. Walking Not even away work. From just it could be like, a, a disagreement with anyone, you know, and you know the other person is wrong. But instead of basically going back and forth, you know, you could just take the high work road by. I mean, they it may be a silent compromise. You know, the compromise may be that you're not just going to engage and walk away. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, that's not necessarily a compromise. A compromise. Yeah, I think yeah, a compromise yeah. is a mutual know. agreement, huh? That's, yeah, it's like yeah. Mm, yeah, that's true. You, compromise you're just reaching. is reaching. Yeah. She's reaching. I'm not reaching. I just I was processing <laughs> as I was talking, but I guess that wouldn't be a compromise because it would be a mutual understanding. Because I don't know. This, what's but the, does the it proper, have to be? What's the proper definition of compromising? Because it, it even like, is it like giving up something? from yourself you're giving up your self enjoyment to no so smooth. a compromise is an agreement or a settlement of a dispute that is reached by each side making concessions so it's a mutual agreement okay so if it has I, to be two people agreeing to okay. something so yeah so that wouldn't fit in that scenario you just threw out that's there. what i just said and i gave you the definition before reading okay so um the bright side of compromising, in my opinion, is like some things we, we as a people, we so stuck in our habits and what we like and what this is what we're going to do. But when you compromise with somebody else, you get to see other things that you normally won't try. You know what I'm saying? Like say, let's go to like a restaurant. Like, um, I love McDonald's, but this, um, you do not love McDonald's. So is that this an is, example? Yes, it's an example. Oh. You just didn't hear nothing I just said. You don't even like I said, McDonald's. This, like, say I love McDonald's, but my spouse wanted, is enjoying Thai food. I, um, I'm i so in love with McDonald's, I would never try Thai food. But me going compromising, let me try it. And then, bam, this shit is good. You know what I'm saying? It's something you would never try, but since you're compromising and going out your box... Sometimes it's a good thing because you're expanding your horizon, I feel like. 
I'm trying to think of it, something that I've ever compromised that you wanted to do that I end up enjoying. I, I, I'm still trying to get you to the gun range. That's the only thing you know I haven't saying? done. That's like the only thing I haven't done. But most of the stuff you do, I would do it anyways. It's not anyways. You won't wake up like, hey, I'm about to go do this. Like if, what? If I'm doing it, you like might what? go fishing. You ain't okay. You, you never, will go. I, you will go, but you ain't gonna wake up and go by yourself. But that's okay. You, this is what I'm saying. Of, but listen, I've never been fishing with you. You never asked me to go fishing and fishing. That may be one thing that I probably would say no, and I wouldn't want to do. But besides that, that's the only thing you kind of got me caught me off guard because yeah, that's the yeah. only one thing that you could say that you would do that I wouldn't want to do. Like if you went nah, and said you want to get on your ATV in the morning, I would do that. If you said most of the stuff, let's go paintballing. I would do most of the stuff you want to do. I already would do. So I just need to go find some stuff that is extreme that you won't do, huh? I think you, I'm more apparently extreme. you ain't compromising then because you're gonna do it anyways. Pretty much, like I think you would have to more compromise the stuff. No, this I is like this is do. what irritates me that I feel like you don't compromise in. When I get a car riding with the sunroof open and letting the sun just beam down on me, I enjoy doing that. You're messing and, up my hair. It depends on the hairstyle. You always complaining about the sun. It de- no, it depends on the hairstyle. I don't want my hair just blowing all over my face. It depends on, and you need to be mindful of that as my husband. Like, oh, let, let, or at least like get a hat or do it when I have some braid or something like that. Because no, that's annoying. Nobody wants their hair just blowing all around. It's irritating. So you should compromise <laughs> or give me a heads up because I don't mind throwing on a hat. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, but that's not an activity. It is. Driving down the coast with the wind blowing. We sunshine. are not on the coast. Like, we are on you know the regular saying? streets. No, sometimes when we go out, like, come on now. But um, yeah, so I, I think compromising is is a good thing. So even with the um I said, let's take it to work as compromise it on the job site, like mutual agreement of workloads. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody feel like it's not my job to do this, but I'm going to be a team player and help out. And most people feel like when you're on the job, shit, this is not my duty. I'm not going to do it. People like that annoy me though. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's the not people that consciously think this is not my job description. Yeah, so it's like they don't have it's because I feel like when you don't compromise, you're a selfish person. What do you think? You think absolutely not compromising in life, is, but in life you have to comp. Th- this is the thing: people compromise every day, and they just don't know what they do. Like what? What's the mm. unconscious compromise that you do every day without you knowing you're compromising? I say go to work. <laughs> a lot of people don't want to go to work, but you go to work because you want. And that's check. a compromise. It's you know a mutually saying? agreement. You show up, I pay you. So it's a, a mutual understanding. Let's say for, but I mean, you, I mean, it is a compromise, but people probably wouldn't see it as a compromise because you have to work to survive. But, hmm, let me think. Because people do with laws, you know, laws that are implemented, you're compromising. We don't always want to agree to the laws. Oh, yeah, I, I don't I, always want to go to, yeah, the speed the speed limit. limit, but I have to compromise because I don't want to take it, right? And so you compromise every day when you really think about it. I'm going to walk in the store and get some food. I don't want to pay for it, right? That's a so, compromise. So it's easier for a person to compromise unconsciously than compromising to build their relationship. I think the difference is people feel like they're being forced to compromise, which in reality you're not because everything is freedom of choice, right? I don't have to go to speed limit, but I compromise because I don't want to pay a ticket. I don't have to go into the store and pay for it. I could steal it, but I compromise it because there's a consequence. Because, Hold on. But I don't think people understand there's a consequence with not compromising within relationships in life. Yes, because it's not. I, I'm on, it is a consequence, but but they don't think it could come so fast. I don't think that it you doesn't. No, I don't think people don't think that it can come so fast. I think people disregard it completely because they don't think it's a consequence. Like no one is saying if you don't do this. This is the results of this. Like, I know if I speed, I may get a ticket. I know if I walk in the store because and steal. You, that, that, can I please yeah, finish this Yeah, but that consequence thought? is right there. But can I finish You're going thought? to jail as soon as it happens. No, because most people that go in there and steal, they don't think they're going to get caught right away. When a person speeds, they don't think, oh, they look around and see the police is not but around. But when you get caught, 
the consequence Can the effects right there right now. My well, you, you're going a long way. Come on. Because goodness, I thought I was impatient, man. So what I'm saying is there is a consequence, but because it's not written, like this is a written law, a written rule in the relationship. I don't feel like I have to compromise because I don't believe there's a consequence. I disagree because I feel like people, they, 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 they get in line because they know that going to jail is, is, is like, bam, right. Happen. Like, so in a relationship, but not necessarily. you could get away with doing shit because sometimes you can that, get away that, with driving. That, that consequence going to be like 10 years later. Which one? You know what I'm saying? So it's like which consequence? With the relationship? Relationship wise, while you're doing stuff in your relationship, and if not, you know what I'm saying? That person, that that consequence could come ten years later. Like, damn, you, but that, that consequence could come. You stealing and speeding. That once you get pulled over, you going to jail type shit, getting the ticket. That's I what disagree. I'm saying. So that's why people be more easier no. to do that because the consequence I is di- faster. If that's the case, most people wouldn't walk. People are are. Known boosters, Mitch, which means they go in a store and steal stuff every day because they do not believe the that they will get caught. caught. Exactly. Yeah, they don't think they'll get caught. Exactly, because they don't feel like they're getting caught. But That's like a cheater. A, a cheater doesn't it, think they're but, always going to get caught. But, okay, let's say you're not compromising. Your spouse is telling you, babe, come on, man, why you don't want to come? She's already addressing you. So uh, in your mind, you already getting caught because she already addressing the issue. Like, but you feel like this consequence ain't, ain't shit. I ain't going to go. I ain't going to do what you want to do, whatever. She keep bringing it up, but the consequence don't come until years later after she really get no, fed up. I just, you know what I'm saying? No, like, I'm tired some, of this. Like, some people, this is what you're, you're assuming. Some people, they want and done. You do it right then and there, there's the consequence. So you got to know who you're dealing with. Everybody is not two years, 10 years later. It's right now, there's a consequence. And even if it doesn't, the relationship doesn't break up. It's still micro consequences where maybe they're not talking to you. Maybe they're disconnected. Maybe now sex is cut off because how you've been acting. There's still some form of consequence. But what I'm saying is we value society's okay, the compromise. I, I, I can see what you're saying. The yeah, person, it's always now they're walking around with an attitude. The, it's, yeah. it's, it's all type of consequences. So we value compromising things that I'm not going to say it's forced on you because you still have the freedom of choice versus someone that you love and, and, and see every day or just even at the job. You you will be willing to compromise because that's a paycheck. It's your livelihood. It's how you're going to eat and survive. But in relationships, even in friendships, even with family members, whatever, we don't see that as if we don't compromise, there may be a consequence. Yes. But is it is it healthy to compromise with your children? Yes. Like, so you're saying they should have their own opinion and do and like they definitely negotiate should have their own and opinion. Go, uh, negotiate what they're going to do. Like, hey, I'm going to this party and just like, hey, here's the pros and cons. And I th- Okay. It depends. Everything is age appropriate. Everything is developmentally, right? Where are they at in, in terms of develop their, de- their developmental stage, right? I do think there's compromise with kids. I don't think it's just my way or no way. You know, certain things, it is just my way or no way. But I also think to say, should they have an opinion? Yes, they're a human. Every, everybody has an opinion. And I think when you silence your kids and not allow them to speak, you're doing them an injustice because what you're teaching them is to be silent and not to speak up. So I don't have a problem with a kid basically telling me their opinion in a respectful manner because what that is teaching them is healthy communication and be able to advocate for themselves when they need to. However... Yes, I do think you should compromise with your kids. There's a lot of stuff I don't want to do, but I do it because it's not just about me. They're a person too. And how do I teach them to make a person or have boundaries for a person to validate them and and show them that they're important if their parents doesn't? Now, what about, do you do it for the whole, like all the kids or do each kid get their own individual rights? It's based on, what do you mean? Because like you know your kids, oh you let whoop de whoop um do no, this. No, if it's a rule, it's a like, rule across on. the well, board. If it's you're a rule, you're not responsible. Listen, you know what I'm saying. If it's a rule, it's a rule across the board. However, I disagree on that listen, because each you're not kid listening is to what I'm individual. saying. So no, so if there's a curfew, it's a curfew across the board. If it's chores, it's chores across the board. That's what I'm saying. You get into technicals, certain stuff, right? Certain things are developmental, age appropriate. 
And then some things is compromise based on personality. Like my youngest people think she, she, she's mouthy, but I, she could be a great lawyer and, and the stuff she says really makes sense. So people probably be looking like, dang, she let, she let her say, yeah, I let her voice what she needs to say until she's going too far and it gets district. Okay. Like, let me reel you back in, but I'm going to allow her to advocate and speak for herself. So, but if another kid is doing that and I know that's not your personality and I know you're just being disrespectful, yeah, I'm going to shut it down. So it's based on personality. You know, when your kid is being disrespectful, when they really just trying to get you to understand what they're saying, you know, all your kids. So yeah, it's different things in ways you're going to compromise with your kids. Like I let my daughter play her music sometimes. Do I really want to hear it? No, but she probably don't want to hear mine either. That's a compromise, but I want her to feel validated and feel like she's just as important as I am in our relationship. Good point. That was a good um, example of letting her play the music in the car because my, my rule, she, the driver chooses the music. But then you're not compromising because she'll never be the driver. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but um, right now we got a moment. So that's manipulation. Man, I'm not going to not be on my phone, even right. if we was videoing this, because I got business to take care of. And, and I could take care of multiple types no, of business. No, like I, as you, long you as I'm not drafting or writing something. You just gave us a moment. As lo- it's 10 yeah, seconds of it needed, but look, this business airway. don't stop. And. And, and nothing is going to, there so is, basically, a, it's not, not going to be neglected. So, so you're not compromising for the podcast. I'm compromising. I'm on the podcast because I got a million things to do right now. And but I stopped to do this. the podcast is not giving your full attention. It has my undivided attention. No, that message on your phone was just. It was, I needed to take no, care of that real quick and it's done. This and a, and, and you took away the, from this it. This is why the, the people the, say, leave the phones off the set. Listen, let me, let me ask y'all this. We only. Did it? Did we miss a beat? We only missed the beat because he brought it up. Had he not said anything, you wouldn't it have had even know. Moment it wasn't an awkward moment for me because you wasn't paying attention. <laughs> shit, no shit, you didn't hear it. it was, that's, I, I need to get the cricket, on, the cricket sound on, in here. On, that's where the compromise <laughs> comes right. in because basically, if you and teamwork, you know, I'm handling business on my phone or my laptop, filling the gap. Mm-hmm. I would. Teamwork so makes the dream work. So compromising, y'all. What's 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 other areas of compromising? Well, people, you're speaking away from the mic. People need to compromise. That. Thank you for letting me um put my lips on the mic. I didn't compromise. say put your lips on the mic. I compromise. said you're speaking away from the mic. <laughs> so um, we did say the kids, the job, dating, I guess, um, relationships. What other areas of even with religion? Let's go over compromising. You think a person could compromise no, their no, religion? Like, no, is that just no, doomed from the beginning? Y'all no, should have set it that no, out from. You I'm know not what compromising my faith. Like, say one one person is a Christian, the other one is the um atheist. You never know what gonna work. Like, it's never gonna work. It's not gonna work. I'm so telling it's no compromising it's not in gonna religion. Compr- I think compromising is like. Um, well, I don't even think this is compromising. I just think this is a freedom of choice. Like. For years, I went to church. You didn't go. I don't think that's a compromise. I think no, that's I did a, compromise, and I not, went a couple of times. But, I, but listen, but I, listen, I, I did compromise. But listen, I don't ever want there. Uh, I say this all the time. This is the dumbest thing ever to me, right? I don't believe in going to church. So I had a conversation with somebody, and they, I'm going to tell y'all two different conversations. The last conversation, somebody had told me that basically they don't wear sandals to church. So I'm like, you go with your outfit and look, oh, I, you know, I don't wear it. We don't, I wasn't raised like that. I'm like, you wasn't raised. Jesus wore you wasn't raised to wear sandals to church. I don't think God cares about what's on your feet, but He does care about how the word impacts you when you leave a different person. Then I had another conversation with someone, and they were saying, you know, they their daughter doesn't like going to church, yada yada yada. And I said, is is it is it about image? Her coming to church, you about image? Because if she can watch service online at home and receive a message, am I going to bring her here to show that she's here? Or would I rather have her watch the message at home and know she leaves with something? Because faith is an individual thing. I don't feel like going, dragging your mate or your kids to church is a compromise. I just want to make sure even if you watch it at home, wherever you watch it, you're getting, because you can go to the church. For me to be like, oh, I want you to go to church. That To me, that's for show. That's just like, oh, I just wanted you to be seen here with me. To, like we're going as a family. But if you're leaving and not 
getting changing nothing. or getting anything, what is the point? So I don't see the compromise in that. I feel like that's an individual choice. Now, compromise comes in where it's like, hey, you know, I'm an atheist and we're we going to be we going to be worshiping uh, the devil here. Yeah, I, I can't say what you would do or what the next person would do. But for me, I just I'm never going to compromise my faith. And I think that would just be that will trickle down with everything in the household. You know what I'm saying? Like well, relationship uh, wise, because everything, because I think everything, a lot of your decisions become off of. But a divided household can't stand, and that's, and that's what, what you're saying. gonna have. It it's gonna be down chaos. To everything, yes. It's gonna be chaos. So, so if somebody's in that situation, they should run. I'm not gonna tell you what you should do. It's just not my situation. I wouldn't recommend it because it's like, okay, you worshiping God and and, and calling in the Holy Spirit, and, and they playing with witchcraft and bringing in the devil. Like who's, who's reigning in that house? Cause two, both of them can't reside. Somebody got to go. Amen. There is no compromise with God because it's either God is here or he's not. So there's no compromising with God guys. Stop there's no compromise. The Stop riding the gate. Yeah. There's, there's no Pick compromise. A side. Pick a side. Pick the game. So, yeah. In a sense like that. But, you know, everybody's different. I can only say what works for me. I won't. But, hey, whatever you do, whatever fo floats your boat, go for it. Yeah, so that's a deal breaker for some. And some is not a deal breaker because they're not that spiritual. And when they get into things and find out later, chaos. Yeah, but I think compromising is a healthy thing. You got to think like this. From the time you're a kid, you're you're being taught to compromise. Share that toy you know, um, help clean up your, your being, or you nah, should be told. No, I don't think that's compromise. That's being told what to do. You know what I'm saying? Because you ain't have the freedom of choice. I think compromise, you have the freedom of choice, but you're saying, you know okay, saying? But, but let me, let me rephrase it and reword it. When you're teaching your kids like, Hey, is it nice to share? Do you want to share with now, Bobby? Now that's giving them freedom of choice. Yeah. Of but when you're rephrasing it as in a question given, and I think kids, believe it or not, are more willing to do things when you ask them versus tell them from a young age, teaching them that they have a choice. So I'll never forget. Um, shout out to Kovacs. Um, he was my professor at APU and my gra uh, grad program graduate program but anyways so he basically was over like he specialized in kids and adolescents and I remember him saying if you want to get your kids to eat vegetables and this is what he was teaching us to teach our clients don't give them one vegetable give them multiple and ask them which one do they want and I was like that's a good idea because in their mind you're giving them the freedom of choice it's not just saying hey eat this but no which one do you want yeah that makes sense. And so even, but some parents will say, no, they just need to do what I say. No, teach them healthy, you know, critical thinking skills to problem solve, to have the ability to choose for themselves. Because what happens if you're always making decisions for them, do what I told you to do. First of all, God doesn't say, do what I told you to do. He gives you freedom of choice. Either you do it, you don't, it's a consequence, but he still allows you to do whatever you want to do. But when you do that with a kid, you're teaching them, that they have the freedom of choice. And as a parent, if you always say, hey, you have to do this, when they get around their friends and in relationships, what you think they what you think is gonna happen? They're gonna feel like they have to do what their friends or their mate is saying. Cause you taught them that. You yeah. never gave them a, uh, the opportunity think, to choose. Deep. Like, yeah, I guess because they would be um they're fearful to choose, boss, yeah. Somebody to boss because them around. I, and people parents parents don't understand what we do and how our mold our kids have effects later on. Cause if I'm never given an opportunity to have a voice and have an opinion or choose, why would be I'm going to be like that in my relationships and with my friends. So when you see people say, did you ever have a voice? No, I didn't. I didn't learn to speak for myself. And so now as an adult, it's hard for me to speak for myself because my parent never did it. And that's what people are going to be dealing with. And it's like, why is my, because that's what you taught them. So when people say like, Oh, my kids don't have an opinion. My kids do have an opinion. As long as you tell me in a respectful way, I'm going to listen to what you say. I'm going to compromise with my kids. I'm not going to always make them do what I want to do, but I'm going to do the things that they want to do. Ooh, coin on that one. You get a coin on that one. And also let your your, your spouse have a, their own opinion too, because I don't see a lot of people trying to keep their spouse from being their self. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
I don't want you doing this. I don't want you doing that. You embarrassing me and all that type if of shit. If you're embarrassing like, your spouse, you shouldn't be with them. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a lot of times people want to keep their spouse spouse in a box and don't let them be their self. And I think that build up a lot of envy. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't think it's not letting your spouse be yourself. I think that's a controlled relationship. To me, the person that doesn't want their spouse to be them, you're just controlling. I mean, there's no other way to put it. True. Because how could you manage another adult? It's things I don't like that you do, but I can't control you, and I don't try to control you because you're a grown man. You know what I mean? Because if it was based on a lot of stuff that I thought, even with the stuff you post, it wouldn't happen. But I don't control you. You're your own individual. And I don't think you should ever be in a position to try to control but, someone. But some people try to be slight because it's not the out front, don't do this. It's now you have an attitude. I think that's the other way of people trying to control somebody. It's like, nah, it's, now it's I, I, let me, I can't, I'm over here laughing and having a good time. Then you look over and you see your spouse over there with a fucking attitude. That's a way of trying to control your spouse. You know what I'm saying? You letting them know you enjoying yourself too much. Calm the fuck down. You know what I'm saying? You don't get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying, but it's twofold. Like, what's the twofold? What's the so other side? So, it could be manipulation if you know that when you do those type of mannerisms, that it's going to make your mate shut down. So, you're doing it to manipulate and control. But then, on the other hand, that person does have the right to express their emotion. So, if they are, they do have an attitude, they have that right. If they're angry about something, that's their own emotion. They're not wrong for their emotion. Now, if you're using emotional manipulation to get someone to do what you want them to do, like let's say, for example, if you try to cry and guilt trip somebody, yeah, you're using emotions to manipulate. So if they're consciously like, yeah, I'm going to do this because I know he's going to stop doing what I'm doing or she's going to stop, then you're manipulating. But if a person is genuinely upset, they have the right to be genuinely upset. Well, we ain't talking about genuinely upset. We're talking about manipulation and control. So that's somebody that's trying to control through emotion. Yeah, there you go. Controlling through emotions. You know what I'm saying? Because some people just not going to outright say, stop doing that. They going, But you they can't going, tell somebody to stop doing you can't, that. I but think a you can have a conversation about that. it. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of relationships, bad relationships that I've never they seen do somebody emotional. Say, stop, do that. Emo- yeah, they ain't going to say stop doing that. They're going to do emotional control. So you've seen you know somebody yes, in a I've relationship seen, tell their mate don't do that? Not tell their mate don't do that. They get an attitude and start, you know what I'm saying? Now they got an attitude. Now their mate look like them. Oh, yeah, let yeah. Me, okay, like, I've seen okay, that. Let me start, or let me, no, like if you would have cut. See, that's why I like dysfunctional couples. I don't like dysfunctional couples because it's like they put a vibe or a damper on a, yeah and as and as, and as a uh, your spouse you 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 pick up on your spouse's energy or so, your partner's yeah. energy and now you feel like damn this shit you know what i'm saying it takes the whole vibe it too. takes the whole vibe away of like damn so they you know don't say verbally cuz i'm no, like you yeah. heard somebody say stop don't do that but no yeah i have been in situations where you out with some people and then their mate it 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 just creates a domino effect of what they dealing with. Now it's coming like, yeah, y'all, y'all do your own thing. Go. Yeah. So that's the, what you call it? The emotional, it's emotional control. manipulation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. But also I think, but see, but this is the thing. And this is why I always tell people, you need to have rules in a relationship. There's unspoken rules that, I mean, you probably know you don't cheat or some people have an open relationship. I don't know. But I think there should always be a conversation about rules. People like, I remember telling somebody this. They was like, we grown. We don't have rules. I said, everything has a rule. I said, when you move into an apartment, there's rules. When you go into the grocery store, there's rules. When you get in your car, there's rules. Every relationship has rules, whether it's spoken or unspoken. Because there's certain things, if you do, there's a consequence. So that therefore, that means there's a rule. The problem Our, is- A mutual agreement. That's Because the rule, a a rule. rule is still, is, is kind of like a-, a, a it's, it's force. Mutual agreement is when both parties agree no, on. But there, you know what I'm saying? No, listen. There are rules in a relationship. Yes, but the word I, I want to say you. I want to say I don't want to say rules. I say mutual agreement because that rule could change it if you with somebody else different. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Because now it's a mutual agreement between listen, two parties of the definition gonna, of a rule. One of a set of explicit or understood regulations are principles governing contact conduct within a particular activity or sphere. It's a rule. So basically somebody's rule may be if you cheat, I'm done. 
The, so whether you want to rephrase it because you don't like the way it sounds, and this is what I have to tell some clients, they didn't like the way it sounded. I'm like, but it doesn't matter how it sounds. It's still a rule. People's boundaries are their rules. That's their manual. No matter how you phrase it, it's a rule. And people need to have conversations in relationships about their rules. We say expectations. Mutual these, agreements. These are my expectations. But what I'm really saying, these are my rules and my manual to me. When you go to get, when you drive a car, these are the rules. This is the manual. In these order are the for, expectations. In, in order for that rule to work, with a job, you got to have a mutual agreement. You know, because everything, my rules don't have to be a mutual agreement. For example. I said, listen, I said for that relationship to work, we need to have a mutual agreement. Yeah, you could have your rules, but I don't give a fuck about your rules. The relationship is not going to work. Listen to what I'm so saying. So that's why I said in order for the relationship to work, you got to have a mutual agreement. You have to have a mutual agreement. But even in a mutual agreement, somebody's rules are still their rules. Yes, but when it comes to mutual agreement, we can negotiate some of your rules. Some rules can't be negotiated. Some relationship having a kid a, outside the marriage cannot rules, be negotiated for me. Well, some rule, and that's what I'm saying. Some things could be mutual agreement of negotiating the rules, because set, set, cause you have set rules. Some of them you could bend and twist, like because if we talk, like okay, some people you could stay out to one o'clock. Listen, I'm cool with we, that. We you know what I'm saying? In the left field. My point is expectations, boundaries, rules, interchangeably the same exact thing. So it's no compromising with rules. It depends. There could be a compromise with rules, but some rules can't be compromised. It depends on the person. Some, okay, for example, some expectations can be compromised, but some expectations cannot. Some mutual agreements can have, can bend a little, but some of them cannot. That's why I say it's all used interchangeably. It's the same thing. Yeah, I see. You, you need a, a handbook. It shit getting complicated. How's it getting complicated? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because if, if, if certain rules could be um, compromised, some can't. And okay, for some example, this is for like, example, damn, I need a handbook. For example, you know what I'm saying? No, for example, rules change. Who you are when you meet her is not the same person you met 10 years from now. So, for example, at 20 years old, you may have can you. You be conditioned as a matter of fact, let's do a prime example because this is I a perfect Yeah, a this thought. is a perfect Dang. way. We've been together since we was young. Never open the door for a car door for her at all. Now, all of a sudden, <laughs> yes. we in our forties. She want me to open I'm the 41. car. She want me to open I the do. car door. Like what? At thirteen, you know what I'm saying. This is like at 13, you changing. You trying 15, to change the game. That, listen, you know check the, exactly because I'm not fifteen. But, I'm but not that's 20. where and this is where I'm saying it got to be a mutual agreement because you set a rule doesn't mean, you know what I'm saying? No, it's no, going to be no, gold. No, no. Like, it's, hold it's, on, it's, we got to discuss this and plan because it's not natural for me okay. to go walk or walk around and open your door. It's but not that It needs easy. to become natural. But you this is the thing. It does need to be a mutual understanding, but some things, even, even if I've been with you that long, and this is why you always need to evolve and grow. Some stuff, if you said I'm not doing, I'm not staying. And that's what I'm saying. So this is the thing. You got to understand this. What you may have been able to do when I was 20, you can't do now that I'm 41. And that things change, things evolve. So yes, okay, maybe opening the door. Okay, I probably wouldn't leave you for that, even though I do. And I'm saying I do want my door open. But some things at 41, it's like, no, nah, that's not going to work for me. And see, and I told her, I don't want to hold hands. That's teenager shit. I want to put my arm out, the gentleman hold, oh, and you hold goodness. my arm and shit. You know what I'm saying? And what you said, that that's that. what you say that was? <laughs> I was like, no, that's the gentleman way the woman holds on to a man. Like, grown people don't walk around holding hands. Yes, they do. You know what I'm saying? You got to be that gentleman. I don't even know the name of it. I got to Google that or something. And I, the man the stick point his is, arm out and she holds on to is, it. The point is, this is the point. There's always going to be compromise in relationships. And even how he's talking about opening the door and how he wants to be held when we're out in public instead of hands. The point is, you should always be evolving and growing, whether it's at work, whether it's with the, with the, with your kids, with your mate, with your friends, because you got to understand who that person was. They may not be today. And, and that's okay. You should change. You should elevate. You should want different things. Yes. But the change you can't, when you change and growing over time, you just can't just force the other person 
to change with you. You got to let them change. No, everybody has their journey. But listen to what I'm saying. Every 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 person has their journey, right? And something as simple as opening the door. That's not a big request. It's not, but it's a big request to me. Listen, it's difficult. Why is it difficult to open the door? Please. Because it's not natural for me. It's it's natural for some guys. You know what I'm saying? Because that was demanded at the beginning. So it's already this is like me going all the way around to open your car doors just don't make sense to me. Okay. Get your ass out the car. This is why now if you don't got hands and arms, but this is the I can see me doing that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? This but is the thing. It's, 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 that's what I'm saying. It's difficult for me. You know what I'm saying? So But this is the thing. Working out is difficult. Everything is difficult when you first start. So the excuse of it, if it's difficult is just an excuse. Because as you continue to do it, it's like dang, this this little, little, small, very small gesture. To do for my wife, if this is going to put a smile on her face, why not do it? You look at it small. I'm looking at it as the Grand Canyon. You know what I'm saying? It's like, (laughs) and you can't take how you look at something and how the next person look at something. That's true. You know what I'm saying? That's true. But in this situation, you really look at it like the Grand Canyon? Yes, because it's not natural. So now I'm going to look at a lot of stuff It's not natural for me. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. It's not natural for me to to go, uh, go out my way, go around... And open your door from getting out at McDonald's. Don't worry, y'all. She's reading email right now. Another important email. But my point is, if your mate has changed. I say patience. No, no. I'm not expecting for you. This was just the conversation we recently have. I think I told you this like two months ago. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I don't expect like. Every time, because this thing was like, no, the only time I'm going to open the doors when we're going out and you're dressed up. I don't care if I'm in like workout clothes. We had Target. Oh, my door open. And, and see, so, I don't believe in that. Yeah, we had a nice restaurant. You dressed up, suited and booted. Like, yeah, let me open the It's door. not about the location you know for saying? me. The location or how I'm dressed. And is, I don't know. I don't think it's the status, too. Like, you jumping out of Honda and me going around opening the door. I don't have door, a Honda, like, but if I did have saying? a Honda, yes, I'm on my door. It just feel like, no. I don't know. I, I don't know. Okay, I, I might so be the only one thinking that you're way. You're being see, superficial. Yes, because I'm very. Because, it's because it's not about, certain oh acts seem like it's at certain levels. Forget it. You know what I'm saying? Put it like this. That's what society put it at. That's what I'm saying. Put it like this. It's a small gesture. To me, it's not about how you feel, the 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 location. It's about something that I want. <laughs> and the funny thing is she demands me open the door when we go to the buildings I and do. stuff. And the funny thing is she get away with it because she would just stand there and wait. <laughs> like, motherfucker, open but the door. But you've been opening doors. So <laughs> you know this is not something new. Like, you've always yes, opened doors. Yes, I have doors. no problem opening the door if I'm there first. But if you there first, I'm not opening the you're going to go stand there and just look at the door like, I'm not open. Okay, the door. like I'm not. But the thing is, you you hold your ground on that one. I do. Now, would you hold your ground on me opening <laughs> that car door? Would you stand at that car door? And you know me, I get in that car and leave your ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because That's you because never you never stood at that car door and waited for me to open that. Because mother. this is something <laughs> that is new. You've always opened doors. I've always expected you to open doors. So I've never opened the door. But now, yes. I expect for you, let's get off of this because this is going on and on. Either you're going to step to the occasion or you're not. This is the thing. Let me tell you something. Something that's so small to one person is so big to another. You need to gauge how serious it is in a relationship because it could be a deal breaker and this or not. is where compromise comes in. That's just a prime example of compromising. Well, you haven't compromised with the car door yet. You know, we ain't went nowhere. You ain't been dressed. I don't have to be dressed to get my this car is your door opening. Open. Look at matter of fact, Google that. Ways of open why should a man open a car door for a lady? Listen. Going out to an event, dress nice. Listen. Not in your your workout uniform. Like, my lifestyle is not based on what somebody else does. You just Google definitions, several other terms. A definition. A definition. But why I want and do something does is not predicted based on what I don't care what whoever else is I'm saying what I want I will open your car door one day it's on my bucket list okay got you but just know when something is continuously being said and it's Mm -hmm. not of importance some other nigga come open your car door hey The ballet do it all the time. Like nigga, she can open her door what you doing (laughs) trying to get her used to some shit (laughs) 
Oh, ballet be having me rolling. They run around and get your door. <laughs> but see, that's even the other thing. They doing it for a tip. The thing is, a lot of people do things for the reward. Exactly. You get exactly. So when you first dating somebody and the woman demands you to open her car door because he wants the reward at the end. A lot Who's of people having sex for a car door open. I mean, come on. Because that impresses a woman. Nah, oh, he opened my car door. He's such a gentleman. If you impressed you know what I'm saying? That, a lot of people impressed by little shit. And but the reason why people that, do shit is for the reward. You know what I'm saying? And so when you started off on that foot, of course they're gonna keep on doing it because they know that the reward is. If you're impressed by a door open, you need to level up. Hey. Some people just get what they get, you know. But I mean? compromise because you you don't you don't ran with this whole door open thing. Okay, compromising. Go ahead. What, what what else we could compromise on? I think you can compromise with like um, your neighbors. Like what? You know, some people play that mariachi music. Oh, you know what irritates me? When your neighbors park in front of your house. Why? Like you got the whole street on your side, but you you park across the street Our in front neighbors of my do house. Do like, that. And I don't know God why they it. do that. And, and nobody like, parks on the street and they'll park right in I don't care because I don't park on the street. Um, but I don't know why they yeah, do that. Like, Maybe they want to see their car if they look out their window on the other side of the street. Yeah, so it's like so what compromise with your neighbors? No, or? I do think you should even compromise with your neighbors in like understanding and being respectful, like of noise different things you know um nobody trips on our street everybody kind of do their own thing but so you're saying ask for their permission if we're gonna have a party and blast the music or compromising or what type of music you play with cuss words and shit like that no i'm not gonna say all that because i'm not gonna be in a house and that's apartment type stuff i'm in a house i'm gonna do whatever i want to do but what i'm saying is like let's say for example if you do have to park if you have an event and you parking all in front of your neighbor, I think you should basically have the common courtesy to have a mutual understanding with your neighbors. Mm, I don't know because the park is the street parking is public parking. I mean that's a bit extreme, not necessarily parking, but you know some stuff people get carried away and it's like they disrespect their neighbors. You know what I mean? Like even the kids, like we don't care, like how they had their kids all in our yard playing. Like that should have yeah. been a conversation. You shouldn't just let your kids be in somebody else's yard, even though I don't care. But what if I was a t the type of person that cared? True. That should have been a conversation before you just letting them running through the sprinklers, got their bikes up and down the driveway. I only know because I see it on the camera, but I don't care. But what if I was that type of neighbor that cared? If you was a Karen. If I was a Karen, I was thinking yeah, that. Yeah, she didn't want to say it. She was a Karen. <laughs> She's trying to be political correct. But I'm not going to even say a person... Is wrong for that. You don't know what I have in my grass. You no, don't even you don't know, know what I'm trying yeah, to do in my you yard. My phone you don't keep know, going off because yeah, you in my driveway. You don't driver, know that yeah. I probably want my ring to keep going because your yeah. kids is up and down my driveway. Like, you need to have a, that's a compromise. You know, you don't just do, and that's what I'm saying. People don't understand that compromise goes outside of your household. It's with other people too. Yeah, but that's not a mutual agreement. If you knock on my door and we that's have a just, conversation, that is a mutual oh, okay. agreement. Once you, that's what you, I'm you, saying. You, have a conversation with, with me. Okay. You know, the time we like, who who in our, we just see this grown woman all in our uh, yard, come to find out her kids but, but running see, through our sprinklers. But, but I'll say with compromise and come in with a situation like that. Okay. Say that kids is riding up and down your driveway. So you go to the door, we're like, hey, your kids is up and down my driveway. So they be like, well, okay, we're going to stop them from going up your driveway um, I don't during nighttime. I, They're going to ride it, do it I, only in the no, morning. I don't think... I should go to your house because my kids are not out at your house. But they don't know their kids are doing it. Yes, they do. You don't know. You assume. In this situation, they know. In this specific situation, they know. And then, for example, like they'll put out the whole, they'll put out the slow, thing. Slow, slow. Slow down playing. the kids playing. But the way they put it, though, is like they got the whole street block. Like, okay, I understand you have kids, but they'll have it like at both ends of the streets because their kids is playing like, I think that should be a conversation. I ain't worried about that. I, still, I don't care. I still speed down. No, you don't. <laughs> I don't care. But I'm saying like the way they put the cones is almost like you basically not even respecting the fact that how I get my car out my driveway is what I'm saying. You just because you got kids, you can put yeah. your cones all around you down sound, the block. You sound like a Karen right now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you Whatever. Over, you over here something like it's He okay. can never just let me be great. It's, it's I the cones. It's, it's, it's safety. I don't want to come outside see a ran over kid. You know what I'm saying? If it prevent, because apparently it's a reason why they put the corns because people be speeding around this corner. I understand that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a safety. all down the block. Yes, though? it's a safety thing, baby. You can't you can't be a Karen <laughs> no. on a safety for the kids, baby. Come on, man. <laughs> like, he's trying to be funny. He can't. Like, let it's, me. it's safety. I don't care. I've never said anything. My point is, it should be no, a compromise. It should be a, a, a conversation too, because that um, it's a um, it's a um. I, I you can't be, even get it out. It's I, a, um, I want to say the correct term because people get upset. It was a um, mentally challenged kid. He's, he has, I think he's he has grown. autism. He's like what? He's in his 20s. No, he's not because he gets off the school bus. And the nigga looked like a grown man to me. So basically, he was in my yard, in my front yard. My ring got the going off. You know what I'm saying? I just see some big black dude all up in my Why door. got to be a big black dude. Because that's what he was. You know what I'm saying? Doing some weird, weird stuff. And almost got itself hurt. They should be letting yeah, yeah, your, yeah, your yeah. neighbors so know. Like, hold on, my neighbors, son. Yeah, like, I think you know what I'm saying. I think that should be like a a conversation. And then my husband's like, "Who's all about to go do, get something and go outside?" Because he's at the door and doing all this crazy stuff. I'm like, "Hey, that's the kid down the street. I think he's autistic." But even that is like a compromise. And like, hey, and people be like, "You should know," but you may not know. Like my husband didn't know. I knew yes, early I've in the seen morning, shit. getting off the bus and I would see him in the yard every morning doing, because I think sometimes he leaves and they're probably unaware that he leaves and he's in other people's yard. But I do think that should be a conversation of a compromise. Like, Hey, sometimes my son may be in your yard, this, 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 and this. And I just think honestly, um, being in the mental health field, if you have a kid or a family member like that period, I think you should let your neighbors know because where we used to live, um, our neighbor's daughter was, she was autistic too. And when she would get out, I would let, you know, like, let me not say get out. It sounds like somebody escaping, but when she would leave the house and a lot of times they wouldn't know, I would take her back to the house or basically let them know. And that was only cause I'm in the field that I'm in and I actually have a nephew that's autistic. So I knew, but everybody looking at that person is not going to know. Yes. And I do think you should make your neighbors aware. Like, Hey, if you see my kid, just so it could be like, you know, a village taking care of one that everybody is on the same page when this kid leaves the home. She or, keeps saying, kid, it's a grown man. I'm, th- I'm not just saying in that situation, family member, kid, whatever, that everybody looks out for, you know, everyone, love, loved ones be, on the street. Uh, aware. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's, it's just be aware. Because like you said, you're waking up early in the morning, your camera's going off and you see somebody all doing some weird shit. It's like shit happens. So be aware. Bring, don't worry, y'all. She in another email again. Go ahead, finish your email. I, I won't hold it down. You know what I'm saying? Read your email. You're you annoying. Because it, it's just people just hear the awkward signs. And like, dang, Samia so been quiet for like 30 seconds. Look, I got business to take like, care of, look. and I'm not going to be apologetic for that. I'm sorry. Right. So basically, compromising could be a great thing for any situation of relationship, friendship, business, um, children. You just got to know how to compromise and know when to compromise. Because all the times you don't have to compromise. You know what I'm saying? You can hold your ground and be like, no, I don't want to do that. No, I, I compromised think... 10 times this week. I'm not compromising on that. Well, you know what I'm saying? That, and that's what I'm saying. Rules, expectation, compromising. Everything is not going to be a compromise. Just like we was talking about faith. My faith is I'm not going to come. You was like, oh, you can't play praise and worship. You can't pray. You can't listen to a sermon. Dude. We're not going to work. Like, I'm not going to compromise that. It's just certain things. That's what I'm saying. Some things you're going to compromise, but some things people, like somebody may say, you don't open my door. That's a deal breaker. You got to know who you're dealing with. You got to understand, well, you know, is, is this, is this that much that I won't open the door if it's a deal breaker? Will I just be willing to let it go? Yeah, but I thought we left the door thing. I'm just bringing it back up. Because I'm, I'm, I'm just letting people know that you you don't have to always compromise. You know what I'm saying? It's, you don't it's a always... healthy balance. No, you you, know you okay in a relationship. Let me get serious now. But if you see, you see us out and he don't open my door, make sure you know you yell out something to him. But anyways, so no, it is healthy to be able to tell somebody no without a consequence. Like I don't have to do something. That you asked me to do. Because I think I think this is emotional manipulation. When someone asks you a question, hey, can I borrow $500? Uh, 
hey, can you go get that for me? And you say no and they have an attitude, that's 100% emotional manipulation because the can you was a question. So when you say can you, you give, you're giving me the opportunity say to no. say yes or no. So if I say no, it shouldn't come with an attitude because it's my right to say no. So when you see people and a person tells them no, they don't want to do something and they have an attitude, then I feel like it's on you because you can't get mad when, unless you're you're always doing for this somebody if you're always doing something for someone else and then when it's asked they can never do it then it's like dang i'm doing all this stuff and you can never do anything for me but when you genuinely ask someone a question and they don't want to do it i think in a healthy relationship that person has the right to say no if i ask my kids something there's a difference between when i'm asking and i'm telling them but if i ask you to do something and you say no they have that right and you can't get mad because they say no, because an, an unhealthy relationship but, is when a person feel like they have to do it because you're going to have an attitude. But even if, even if you did a lot of things for me, I still have the right to say no. No, 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 no. That's shit. not what I'm saying. What was your, I'm, your saying when it, I'm saying when the relationship is one-sided. Let's say like if I'm always doing something for you, but it, you can never do something for me. Then it's like you have to reevaluate. Like, wait a minute. Every time I don't have a, ever have a problem with doing something for you, but it seems like every time I ask you to do something, it's an issue. But but because it, it's it's levels to that too. Because I could say like say say a person always want to borrow sugar. Let me borrow your sugar. Let you, me borrow your milk. You think it's too deep? No, but I'm saying this is because sometimes some people ask extreme. I'm talking about you know a one sided relationship. But one is, side, one side, this one is, side. This is what I'm saying is this person asks for a lot of petty shit. Not extreme. I'm like, saying hey, on the same level. Let me, let me, I'm saying on the same level. Let me borrow level. your house. I'm like, saying what? I'm, like people have asked. People ask extremes. You know what I'm saying? They get mad because you say no. Well, I did this. I did that. I'm not, I did I'm this. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a one-sided relationship. Obviously, if somebody's asking extreme stuff, yes, you could say no. But what I'm saying is. Kind of like you always looking out and being there for someone, but they're never showing up for you. But did it ask? Forget it. You know what I'm saying? Because even though if you you that type of person that be there for people, because that's who you are, did did that person I'm ask? Specifically, you know what I'm saying? Referring to a one sided relationship you keep taking it away well, from I don't know, one side I, I, ain't, I ain't in no wrong one sided relationship you don't would experience. never be in a one sided relationship because that's not how your mindset is made up but there's many people outside of you that are in one sided relationships where they go over and beyond for people and a person does not reciprocate it so I'm saying in that situation but some people that go over of, beyond they oh. they got this they, they want to be that helping hand because they, they, that's who they are. I'm not talking about that. Well, I'm talking you. Shit. You keep bringing other examples because you to keep saying one one sided relationship. But sometimes that one sided person always want to be the helper. Listen, I'm giving examples of healthy and unhealthy. I'm only referring to a one sided relationship. You're not talking. Okay, about well, keep referring to your one sided relationship. I don't refer to these the one sided relationship where people always doing stuff for somebody else. Without them even asking, but then get mad when they need something and they not there for them because you the helper. If you're the helper and always want to be, hey, I look that person look like he's hungry. Here's a sandwich. They didn't ask you for a sandwich, but now when they when you need something, you expect that person, hey, that's not what we're I gave you a that. sandwich. Um, I need some bread over here. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Okay, we're saying two it's different like things. Is what I keep some telling. Some people is, is they want to be the helper without even somebody asking, but, but the, expecting but, something in return down the line. But their motives are off, and that's not what I'm talking about. But okay, to wrap this up because I do have a meeting. So to wrap this up, she's trying to shut me up because my point was made. I get a coin on that. No, <laughs> we were saying two different things, and you kept going. I'm saying in a one sided relationship that has nothing to do. So with y'all, we gonna wrap this up because apparently Sania got a whole lot of more important shit to do instead of bless y'all <laughs> with this game. Um, so y'all can find me on all social medias. I am Grindface. Don't cut me off like they that. They can find you where? No, don't, don't, don't do that. You, you, you better no, come no, on. I no. control the switch over here. Where they can find you? You control nothing but your mouth. You, they can find me on all everything, Sania Mile. Oh, and hopefully, because my two episodes that he's producing, lighting was terrible. Hopefully, this next one, the lighting will be great. So y'all make sure y'all tune in and tap in with Talk with Sania. That's my other podcast. Okay, exit. Job.
exit oh, the show. Oh, oh, oh. Like, oh goodness, <laughs> man, unprofessional. Until next time, continue to break cycles. <laughs>